Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. Today we are going to be getting a look at the GTX 1080 Ti. I'm going to be testing it up against my own GTX 1080. The 1080 Ti was provided to me out by NVIDIA, but this GTX 1080, if you guys remember, I picked this up way back on launch day for Micro Center, but we're going to be testing these cards side by side with 1080p and 1440p performance to see which one of these graphics cards can push out the most frames for our modern gaming needs. All of my testing was done in the same system with the i7-7700K, which is overclocked to 5 gigahertz. I use that because the KB Lake 7700K has proven recently that it is just the fastest gaming CPU that is currently on the market that you can really have today to be able to push out the most frames possible with your graphics card. So we're using that paired up with 16 gigabytes of G-Skill Trident Z RAM, which is overclocked to 3000 megahertz. We've also got my tried and true Pascal GPU overclock of an additional 200 megahertz on the core and 300 megahertz on the memory. I always apply that to any Pascal GPU that I test and I also push the power limit slider all the way to the right in MSI Afterburner. And that usually ends up bringing up my core frequency up to around 2025 to 2076 megahertz depending on what boost is doing inside a particular game and the memory always with that 300 megahertz on there as well is always stable on whatever pascal gpus i've tested it on and that was no difference here different here with the 1080 ti so it was nice being able to test the 1080 and the 1080 ti with the same exact overclock of that plus 200 and plus 300 applied in msi afterburner I was curious to see what the temperatures would be, so I ended up running Heaven for about 45 minutes to an hour on both of these cards, and there wasn't really any big surprises here. With a open-air test system, they ended up sitting at about 75 degrees Celsius, and it didn't seem to impact the frequencies at all, when it, with the, even with the overclock apply there, was able to stay over 2000 megahertz at around 75 degrees Celsius after running just nearly an hour here with the 1080 Ti. I'm going to be going over here now the averages and the minimum frame rates. We'll start off with 1080 and then go into 1440p where we could see the GTX 1080 Ti is pushing out a massive amount of frames here at 1080p, 199 FPS in Rainbow Six Siege to the 150 of the GTX 1080, so over about a 25% increase there, and that is pretty consistent across the board here, around 25 to 30% performance increase over the GTX 1080, which is now $699 here for the 1080 Ti, and you can get the 1080 for $499, so they've got that price drop there, and the 1080 Ti came out at a pretty good price. We had thought earlier it was going to be up around nine hundred thousand dollars but now seeing this titan x pascal type performance i'm curious to see how many people out there are going to go out and pick these cards up the performance continues on with battlefield one we can see get 184 fps to 155 uh, metro last light redux 186 to 162 sniper elite 4 on dx 11 203 fps compared to 152 on the GTX 1080. When we look at the minimums, that story continues where we could see a massive disparity in the numbers here on titles like Rainbow Six Siege with 163 minimum at 1080p compared to 90 FPS on the GTX 1080. So huge difference in titles like that. Other titles are a little bit closer. We see 162 to 139 in Battlefield 1, 83 to 67 in, in Arkham Knight. Uh, DX11 on Hitman was really close. It was 75 to 68, and that also showed some kind of weird numbers in 1440p as well, where the uh, 1080 and 1440p performance was nearly identical with the GTX 1080 Ti. As we'll see here now, we'll go into the 1440p averages. You see Hitman there got 132, and I believe it was 135 at 1080p with the GTX 1080 Ti, so very, very close there. GTA 5, we could see 154 FPS average, Rainbow Six Siege 131, so just a huge amount of FPS you're getting here for um, what I think is a pretty good value right now, and at least until we see what Vega has to offer from AMD. That's really the big question now on everyone's mind is what is Vega going to do when that comes out, and is that going to compete directly with 1080? Is it going to compete with 1080 Ti? And for what price? Are they going to be able to put those cards out at? It's going to be certainly interesting to see. And once again, here I'll put up the minimums for 1440p for those of you are that out there that are interested in taking a look at the, those numbers. They're up on your screen there. If you want, you can go ahead and pause it or take a look at them longer if you want, but I'm going to go ahead and close those out now. So certainly a very impressive showing for the 1080 Ti. It nearly lived up to Jensen's promise of 35% faster 
than the GTX 1080. It did live up to it in some titles, and in others it was a little bit less than that, but still a very, very powerful card out there. I'm curious how many of you out there are going to go ahead and pick these up for $699 on launch day. Of course, there is the benefit with the TIs over the T Titan X Pascals of that there will be board partner cards eventually coming out as well from companies like EVGA, MSI, Gigabyte. I'm hopeful to get in at least one of those cards to test here in, on the channel in the future. But I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here, guys. If you want a link to where you could pick up the 1080 Ti, I will leave a link down in the description below over to Amazon or NVIDIA.com, wherever you could pick these cards up, at least when they're available. And then probably board partner cards will be available sometime in the near future. I'm not sure of the exact dates yet on those, but keep an eye out for them. And I will be keeping you updated on TGW and then in news videos that we do here on the channel. But I'll catch you guys next time.